Sometimes I envision a world where man and goat would have a symbiotic relationship. My only regret, however, is that Isewu will cease to exist. Isewu is a traditional Nigerian delicacy made of soft, boiled goat's head, blended with traditional Nigerian spices, served in a wooden bowl with a false bottom, which is still a subject of ongoing controversy. I grew up with a young uh, friend of mine called Pope, who had a pet goat called Monday. Many of you may not know this, but goats are actually very selfless creatures. They give up their entire existence to man, either as pets or for food. Africa today is very much like Monday. Though many of us would agree that they are both very valuable, but they are used with very little discretion. This cannot continue. Whilst we Africans um, pride ourselves a lot in, academic, in pursuit of academic degrees and certificates, we are indeed very, very shallow when it comes to relevant knowledge. We forget to harness um, our educational approach from our rich history and our rich cultural heritage. And this is the kind of um, education that we require for future success of Africa and Africans. This knowledge is also very important to establish symbiotic relationship between the continent and the rest of the global community. Education that is authentic, homegrown, and that reflects an African content, African context with African ideologies. We need to change a few things about the way we learn. We need to become a bit more broad-minded and be able to accommodate our rich heritage as Africans and the peculiarities of the continent to ensure that we align or um, approach things with a global perspective. The United Nations predicts that by 2050, Africa alone will, will have about 2.4 billion people on the continent. This actually creates an opportunity for boom, but if only harnessed properly. If we don't, it will create um, an opportunity where you have uh, a sustainable environment. And today, we depend on science, technology, and innovation um, from coming from outside of Africa, whereas we have not interrogated reused or explored our African sciences. And this is from a country or a continent that prides itself as the cradle of civilization. In my undergraduate years, I was um, a bit of a disillusioned student. And this is not because my lecturers didn't try, but largely because the content was not original. I couldn't connect with it. It didn't um, reflect my context, and it didn't, I didn't see how it changed, it was going to change my environment. Which is why when we found an opportunity in 2016 to create or found uh, Nigeria's first university embedded incubator at the University of Nigeria, we took, it, took the opportunity with both hands. And we created very lofty objectives one key one was to um, create an enabling environment for the commercialization of research output, which is very low from our universities. But 
we also really wanted to enable the academic community blended with the society, uh, the public society, to be able to create local solutions with a global perspective. And mind you, this is in a community of 40,000 people. You personally, and um, it's globally known fact that innovation lives within the university. This journey has been very, very rewarding because today we have an organization called Alphotazi. Alphotazi is a young agrotech organization or business founded by two young engineering students who grew up in the cassava belt of the southeastern part of Nigeria. And um, they, they created a modular, a, a method, a model, a community-based model uh, where they deploy modular processing plants for cassava. And the problem was to solve lack of access to market for poor rural farmers who planted cassava. The had issues with being able to move their process, uh, their goods to the market. And one of the issues was the perishable nature of cassava and the distance um, uh, based on poor, poor, poor roads and the rest of that. But what our Fotazi did was because of the fact that more than 30% of cassava produced in these regions perished. They were not even harvested at all because they didn't have markets. Meanwhile, Nigeria, based on the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United States, produces about 57 million tons of cassava per year, making us the world's largest cassava producer. However, we import starch and a whole lot of other processed cassava produce. I also want to mention uh, Aaron, which is another organization out of the University of Nigeria with a couple of um, young students as well, working with the, the research community there. Aaron is so focused on their aerial logistics business. They have a design that I found very unique and representative of the African, the future of Africa. They designed um, a network of charging stations for the future drone fleets that we expect to see in big cities like Port Harcourt and Lagos. These two companies are just representative of the millions of ideas that can originate from Africa that can be developed as solutions, services, ideologies, or products and exported to the rest of the world. It will lay the basis for our kind, the kind of future and the rightful place we want to see for Africa of the future. Both companies have seen um, huge interests from local and, uh, foreign, local and foreign organizations and indeed individuals as well. But the truth of the matter is that most of them would receive foreign um, for it, they, they, would, they would be, most, most times they would be uh, appreciated more. They would have received foreign um, uh, support before they would be celebrated back home. So typically we like all things foreign. And you see organizations, homegrown organizations, raising money, getting support, all from the international communities. And only then would they come back and then we begin to celebrate them locally which is why it took Robert Newitz's 2018 TED Talk on Imoafia to bring a locally grown, tested and trusted model and system of apprenticeship to global discourse. Ibuaboy or Imoafia is a system that enables young people spend a couple of years serving um, a boss who teaches them, nurtures them, mentors them, and at the end of the process, even gives them seed money to start a business, providing lower failure rates than are existing with typical businesses started with such um, less level of nurturing. As such, I envision a, a day when Iba Boy or Mafia will become processed, 
packaged as a local ideology from Nigeria to the world. And it will be taught like known theories like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which irrespective of where you had your own economics classes, you will be taught pretty much the same thing. Let's talk about Candy Boy Okosi, who is the local rainmaker for my own hometown, Onicha, in Anambra State. Candy Boy Okosi is typically utilized at local events for the purposes of preventing rain or maybe making it depending on who is paying. However, in Beijing, he has his counterparts from the Beijing Weather Modification Office, which is a government um, institution employing 37,000 people just for the purpose of preventing or making rainfall. In fact, as at the Beijing 2008 Olympics, the Chinese government utilized professionals from this outfit to ensure that they prevented rainfall at certain um, events. I envisioned the day Candy Boy and his African peers would take their rightful place as professionals using science that they've used over the past couple of hundred years, passed down from generation to generation, such that they can also solve these problems for the local populace and for the global community without being despised as some form of African traditional um, practitioners as though that was something less important. I also envisage the day that Jollof Wars will move away as just being mere social banter, social media banter between African brothers and sisters and take its place on the global, uh, become some kind of global cuisine and find its way to top restaurants as a blended form of recipes from Africa to the rest of the world. This kind of um, communication uh, um, that can be done with something like the Jolo for such recipes is what many consider as some of the examples would include the Nigerian music industry uh, the dance, the dances that we've been able to export, and of course our notable Nollywood movie industry. Some of my friends who call that soft power, and this is the kind of power that we need to use as Africans to set the tone of originality and the fact that we are not less than we are considered to be. The future will be driven by technologies like artificial intelligence, blockchain, and the likes. These technologies will change the way we know life today. And it is important to mention that these are data and platforms and know-how driven. And I must mention also that data is driven by people. It is people that create and generate data. However, Africa will be adding about 1.3 billion new people to the world within the next 30 years. It means that we will be generating a whole lot more data. However, I am not confident. Today, we, cannot, we do not own our data. We do not manage it. And I'm not confident that we will be able to exploit our data, even for today, neither for tomorrow. Which is why in 2015, we created a not-for-profit organization called TechWest STEM Academy. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. And it focuses on using a model called Learn and Give Back um, for teaching digital literacy amongst many communities. Currently, we're across about 15 states delivering this to thousands of young African children. And it's important for, you, for myself and for you to create more programs like this for the African continent, much unlike uh, waiting for foreign aid. Dan Bisamoyo, a Harvard-trained economist, wrote a book called Dead Aid. And in that book, she reminds us that Aid cannot solve Africa's problem. 
In fact, there's no known statistics that shows that AIDS delivers the good goods in any way, manner, or form. So for an African resurgence, we need to be very unconventional in our approach and look home. I leave you today with what is, what was, what can be, and what has been done. I have no doubt in my mind that um, Monday, Pope's ruminant pet could have been able to change its future. But I believe that Africa can change its future if and only if we truly believe that everything matters. Thank you very much. Thank you.